So we've now had two full weeks in total, five different match days of non-league football for the 1920 season. What have we learned from the first two weeks? We're going to be looking at 10 things that we have learned in this video. But first of all, this video is sponsored by One Football, which is a great to date with loads of different news, scores, league tables, fixtures, transfers, all sorts of different things from lots of different leagues across the UK and across the world. There's lots of different facts that you can learn from this app and stay up to date with your team that you support. It's got an average rating of 4.7 and 4.8 on Apple and Android. We're on Android. There are over a million people voting for that rating. So it's a very highly rated app and I would recommend it. So if you want to download it, the link to download it will be in the top line of the description. But let's get straight into this video with the first thing that we've learned. And that's quite simply that there are a few different rule changes now for the upcoming season. The first one is that if the ball strikes the referee during the match, then play is immediately stopped and a drop ball is awarded to the team that was in possession at the time. In the past, the ball would just bounce off the referee and if something major happens as a result of it, then nothing really would happen. But now that gives some sort of clarity and removes a bit of grey area in terms of what happens when the ball hits the referee. Also, substitutions are changing slightly. If a player gets substituted off, then they have to exit the pitch at the nearest possible point. Now, in practice, so from the games that I've seen, there are players who are still going over to the far side of the pitch. If they're winning 1-0 and it's like 10 minutes to go and they're trying to kill a bit of time, they go over to the far side of the pitch and they have to walk all the way across to the near side to get substituted off. Now, this rule basically is to stop players from doing that, but I have still seen it happen in the first two weeks of the season. So I think it's one that players will slowly get more used to and referees will probably hopefully clamp down on a bit more because it does reduce time wasting. There are a few other rules that have been brought in and I'll I'll leave a link to them in the description. We've also learned that Epsilon United's Twitter admin was a little bit rusty on the opening day of the season. If this tweet had the word sent added in there, there would be nowhere near as many likes and retweets as what it has got. Speaking of Epsfleet, they have not started the season off very well. They've not won a single game in their opening five. Five defeats in a row, including their opening day 4-1 defeat at home to FC Halifax Town. But yeah, the financial problems at Epsley that have been well documented over the last few months look like they haven't gone away yet with the way that this team has basically started the season. They need some extra additions. Something needs to change if they want to turn their season around. Another team that could be in for a difficult season down at the bottom of the National League is Chesterfield, who I'm surprised have started so slowly yes it could just be a slow start and yes I know last season was a tricky one for them but this season it doesn't look like they've kicked on a huge amount at least they haven't in the first five games because they've not won yet they've only got three draws and two losses they sit in the relegation zone looking up to the top of the table and Solly Ormore's like they could be going for another positive season fighting for the title they're currently sitting at the top of the table with 15 goals scored from five games including an impressive 6-1 away victory at Chorley on Tuesday night they've got four wins in a row so things are looking quite good for them they were last season classed as overachievers but this season they do seem to be spending quite heavily like they did spend heavily last season but this season they have got to make some real good additions by the looks of things so they could actually be challenging up at the top throughout the season once again another one that's really surprising me actually that they are doing so well at the start is Woking who've started off with four wins and one defeat their most recent one came on Saturday against AFC Fylde winning 4-1 away from home that's a huge result and a big statement into the National League North we've learned that Bradford Park Avenue got their managerial appointment very wrong they swapped Mark Bauer for Gary Thompson during the off season and Gary Thompson lasted just two matches being dismissed along with his assistant Sean Gardner after their 5-0 home defeat to Geisley just four days after the opening day of the season where they also lost 5-0 away at Curzon Ashton. So they lasted two games, both of them 5-0 defeats. They've now left the club and since then Marcus Law has come in. They've actually got a one-all draw in there as well where at Gate said so they are off the mark and actually don't sit bottom of the table because Blyth are even below them. They've lost all four of their opening four games. Now the reason that they have only played four games is because they were due to play Spennymore as were Boston, but both of those games were postponed. Spending have had some work going on on their pitch over the last few months because they've got a notoriously 
bad pitch when the weather gets bad. So they're putting some work over this summer, invested into their pitch to get it up to a good standard. But unfortunately, they knew that this work was gonna run into the start of the season. There wasn't gonna be enough time to do it before the opening day. So they asked the league before the fixtures were announced to uh, basically account for this and give them away fixtures for the first few weeks of the season to give them that extra bit of time. However, the league decided they weren't gonna grant this. And as a result, spending more have had to postpone their games anyway. So they've only played three games so far. And out of those three games, they've actually only got one point, which is surprising for the team that got to the playoff final last season and missed out on promotion on penalties. Heartbreak for them. Can they recover this season? And can their pitch stay at a good standard throughout it as well? Finally, we've learned that we have seen probably the strangest goal of the season already. This goal occurred in a match between an Eton Borough and Kings Langley on the opening day of the Southern League Premier Division Central season. This goal made it 2-0 in a 3-0 win for Kings Langley at Nuneaton. This goal from 60 yards, he's just hoofed it and it's somehow just completely been taken by the wind and swerved into the top corner. If you look at the teammate over on the far side of the pitch in the right wing, because he's anticipating that the ball is aimed at him and he's gonna try and get on the end of it, but he soon gives up. And then he just watches the ball sail over the keeper's head and go into the top corner. Very wind assisted. That is certainly one of the strangest goals that we are going to see this season. But let me know any of the things that you have learned from the first two weeks of this season in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button and click subscribe as well. I hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching.